I can still feel the shivers down my spine as I recount the terrifying encounter that unfolded deep within the woods of Pine Hollow. It all began one fateful summer when I was just a curious teenager, full of daring and bravado, unaware of the horrors that lurked beyond the serene exterior of the forest. Pine Hollow was a place of myth and legend among the locals. Nestled deep within the heart of the forest, it was said to be the home of malevolent spirits and supernatural entities. Tales of hikers who ventured too far into its depths and never returned were whispered among the townsfolk. Despite the ominous stories, my friends and I, seeking adventure, decided to explore Pine Hollow one sunny afternoon. The forest was enchanting as we ventured deeper into its depths. Tall, ancient trees towered above us, their leaves casting eerie shadows on the forest floor. The silence was deafening, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves or the distant call of a bird. As we ventured further, the forest seemed to swallow us whole, and the outside world faded away. It wasn't long before an unsettling feeling washed over us. We had been following a narrow trail that seemed to lead deeper into the woods, but now it felt as though the trail was leading us, rather than the other way around. I exchanged nervous glances with my friends, but no one was willing to admit their growing unease. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long, sinister shadows among the trees. As darkness fell upon Pine Hollow, we realized that we had lost our way. Panic began to set in, and we quickened our pace, desperate to find our way back to civilization. But the forest had other plans. Strange sounds surrounded us, whispers that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. It was as if the very trees were taunting us, their ancient voices carrying tales of long-forgotten horrors. We stumbled upon an old, decrepit cabin hidden amongst the trees. It was a sinister sight, its windows shattered, and its wooden walls covered in eerie symbols. My heart pounded as we cautiously approached the cabin. The door creaked open with a spine-chilling groan, revealing the darkness within. It was then that I felt it. A presence, something malevolent watching us from the shadows. My friends and I exchanged terrified glances, but we were drawn into the cabin as if by an invisible force. Inside, the air was thick with the stench of decay. Cobwebs hung from the ceiling, and the floor was littered with rotting furniture. The symbols on the walls seemed to pulse with a sinister energy. We knew we had to leave, but our feet refused to move. Then, from the darkest corner of the cabin, a figure emerged. It was a spectral, shadowy figure, with hollow eyes that seemed to pierce into our very souls. I could hear my friends whimpering behind me as the figure drew closer, its presence suffocating us. In a voice that seemed to emanate from the depths of the underworld, it spoke. You should not have come here, for Pine Hollow belongs to us. Its words sent chills down my spine, and I felt a cold hand grip my heart. With a sudden burst of adrenaline, I broke free from the cabin's grasp, my friends following closely behind. We ran blindly through the dark forest, branches scratching at our faces and thorns tearing at our clothes. Behind us, we could hear the unearthly wails of the malevolent entity pursuing us. Hours passed, but the forest showed no signs of letting us go. It was as if Pine Hollow had become a labyrinth, shifting and changing to keep us trapped within its grasp. Exhausted and terrified, we finally collapsed onto the forest floor. That's when we heard it, the mournful, haunting melody of a violin. It echoed through the trees, sending shivers down our spines. We followed the eerie sound, our desperation overriding our fear. Eventually, we stumbled upon a clearing where an old, withered tree stood. Beneath the tree sat a spectral figure, its bony fingers expertly moving across the strings of a violin. Its eyes were hollow, and its music was a lament, a mournful tune that seemed to capture the very essence of Pine Hollow's malevolence. With trembling voices, we begged the figure to release us, to let us go. The entity paused, its hollow eyes locking onto ours. It spoke again, its voice softer this time. You have trespassed into the heart of Pine Hollow, and you may never leave, but perhaps you may stay and become part of its dark legacy. We refused, our determination overpowering our fear. With one final mournful note, the figure vanished into the night, 
and the haunting music faded away. It was then that we found our way back to the trail, and Pine Hollow released its grip on us. We stumbled out of the forest, exhausted and shaken, vowing never to return to that cursed place. The scars of that night still haunt me, a constant reminder of the malevolent presence that dwells within the depths of Pine Hollow. It is a place where the line between the living and the dead blurs, where the forest itself seems to conspire against those who dare to venture too deep. To this day, I can't help but wonder if Pine Hollow is truly a place of malevolence, or if it was simply a manifestation of our own fears and insecurities. But one thing is certain, those haunting memories will never fade, and the legend of Pine Hollow will forever remain a chilling reminder of the horrors that can lurk within the deepest, darkest woods. I was always drawn to the mysteries of the woods. Growing up in a small town nestled at the edge of Blackwood Forest, I had heard countless tales of eerie encounters, strange sightings, and chilling legends about the place. But like any curious teenager, I couldn't resist the allure of the deep woods. Little did I know that my own terrifying encounter was about to become a part of the forest's dark history. It was a cool autumn evening when I decided to venture into the woods with my best friend Mike. We had packed some flashlights, a few snacks, and a camera to capture our adventure. As we ventured deeper into the forest, the daylight began to wane, and the trees seemed to loom overhead, their branches casting eerie shadows on the forest floor. The first hour was uneventful, and we were having a great time, laughing and cracking jokes. But as the sun sank below the horizon, a sense of unease settled over us. The forest grew quieter, and the wind rustling through the leaves began to sound like whispers. We brushed it off as our overactive imaginations playing tricks on us. As we continued deeper into the forest, we stumbled upon an old, decaying cabin. Its windows were shattered, and the wooden walls were covered in moss and ivy. Mike, always the adventurous one, suggested we check it out. Against my better judgment, I agreed. The inside of the cabin was even more unsettling. The air was damp and musty and the floor creaked with every step. It was as if time had stood still in this place. We explored the first floor cautiously, peering into rooms filled with rotting furniture and cobwebs. It was like a scene from a horror movie. We made our way upstairs, and that's when things took a sinister turn. In one of the rooms, we found an old tattered journal. Its pages were yellowed with age, and the handwriting was shaky and barely legible. The entries described bizarre occurrences in the forest, tales of people vanishing without a trace, and encounters with something that could only be described as otherworldly. As we read the journal, a sudden gust of wind slammed the door shut with a deafening bang. We jumped, our hearts racing. Panic began to set in as we realized that we were trapped in that eerie cabin. We fumbled for our flashlights and tried to pry the door open, but it wouldn't budge. It was as if the very wood had come alive to keep us inside. We could hear strange, whispering voices from beyond the door, like a chorus of the damned. Hours passed, and our fear grew. We tried calling for help on our cell phones, but there was no signal. The temperature inside the cabin dropped, and we could see our breath in the dim light of our flashlights. Our only source of comfort was each other and even that was waning as our nerves frayed. As the night wore on, we heard something moving downstairs. It was slow, deliberate, and filled with a heavy sense of dread. We huddled together, praying that whatever it was would go away. But it didn't. It was coming closer, step by agonizing step. With trembling hands, I aimed my flashlight at the staircase. What I saw will haunt me for the rest of my days, a shadowy figure, tall and gaunt, with hollow eyes that seemed to pierce into our very souls, was slowly ascending the stairs. It moved with an unnatural grace, like a wraith on a mission. Mike and I couldn't move, paralyzed by fear as the figure drew nearer. Its presence was suffocating, and the temperature continued to drop. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost, a deafening roar echoed through the cabin, and the figure vanished into thin air. The door that had trapped us swung open, and we stumbled out into the cold night, gasping for breath. We ran blindly through the forest, 
not stopping until we reached the safety of our town. We never looked back. That night in Blackwood Forest, I learned that some mysteries are best left unsolved. The encounter in that decaying cabin was more than just a tale of the supernatural. It was a glimpse into the darkness that lurks in the heart of the deep woods. To this day, I can't shake the feeling that whatever we encountered that night still lingers in those woods, waiting for its next unsuspecting victim to stumble into its domain. As I sit here, recounting the events that unfolded deep within the woods that fateful night, a shiver still runs down my spine. What happened to me is beyond explanation, and I can only pray that it never happens to anyone else. It all began on a seemingly ordinary evening when I decided to venture into the woods to explore and find some solace from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. The forest, known as Pinebrook Woods, was located on the outskirts of our small town. It was a place I had frequented since I was a child, finding comfort in its serene beauty and tranquil atmosphere. But that evening, as I made my way deeper into the heart of the woods, an unsettling feeling washed over me. The sun was setting, casting eerie shadows that danced among the trees. The once familiar path seemed different, as if nature itself had conspired to alter its course. I shrugged off the unease and pressed forward, determined to reach the clearing at the center of the forest, where a small, secluded pond awaited. As I walked deeper into the woods, the forest became denser, and the sounds of nature grew louder. The chirping of crickets and the rustling of leaves were soon replaced by an unsettling silence. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end, and my heart raced. I could feel eyes watching me from the shadows, but when I turned to look, there was nothing there. I quickened my pace, my footsteps echoing through the empty forest. The once friendly trees now seemed to loom over me, their branches stretching out like skeletal fingers. The path I had followed for years had vanished, and I found myself hopelessly lost. Panic began to set in as I realized that I had no idea which way to go. I stopped to catch my breath my heart pounding in my chest. That's when I heard it, a soft, eerie whisper that seemed to emanate from the very trees themselves. It was a language I couldn't understand, guttural and otherworldly. I strained my ears to listen, trying to make sense of the words, but they remained elusive. Fear gnawed at my insides as I continued to walk, desperately searching for a way out. The forest seemed to close in around me, the trees shifting and rearranging themselves as if mocking my attempts to escape. I knew I had to keep moving, but every step I took only seemed to lead me deeper into the labyrinthine woods. Hours passed, though it felt like an eternity. I had no sense of time anymore, and exhaustion weighed heavily on me. My throat was parched, and I was on the brink of despair. That's when I stumbled upon a clearing, not the one I'd been searching for but a different one altogether. In the center of the clearing stood a grotesque ancient tree. Its twisted branches reached for the sky, and its bark was a sickly shade of gray. As I approached, I saw something hanging from one of the branches, a collection of tattered, weather-worn dolls swaying gently in the breeze. Each doll had a grotesque appearance, with button eyes that seemed to follow my every move. Their mouths were sewn shut with thick black thread, and their limbs were contorted into unnatural positions. It was a chilling sight, and I couldn't tear my eyes away from them. As I stared at the dolls, the whispers grew louder, filling the clearing with an unsettling cacophony of voices. It was as if the very trees themselves were speaking to me, their words a twisted, nightmarish chorus. I felt a presence behind me, and I turned to see a figure emerging from the shadows. It was a tall, gaunt figure, shrouded in tattered robes that seemed to blend seamlessly with the surrounding darkness. Its face was obscured by a hood, and its bony fingers reached out towards me. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. I was paralyzed with fear as it drew closer. The figure's eyes, glowing with an otherworldly light, bore into mine. In that moment, I knew I was facing something beyond comprehension, something ancient and malevolent. 
It whispered in that eerie, incomprehensible language, and I felt myself being drawn towards it, unable to resist its pull. Just as it reached out to touch me, a blinding flash of light illuminated the clearing. I shielded my eyes, and when I looked again, the figure was gone, as were the twisted dolls. I was alone in the clearing. The whispers silenced, and the forest returned to an eerie stillness. With trembling legs, I stumbled back in the direction I had come from, desperately retracing my steps. Miraculously, I eventually found the familiar path that led me out of Pinebrook Woods. As I emerged from the forest, the first rays of dawn were breaking over the horizon. I collapsed to the ground, gasping for breath, and realized that I had narrowly escaped whatever malevolent force had taken hold of the woods that night. To this day, I have no explanation for what I encountered, and I can only warn others to stay far away from Pinebrook Woods after dark. That night forever changed me, leaving me with a deep and abiding fear of the woods, and a chilling certainty that there are forces in this world that defy understanding, forces that can only be described as pure, unadulterated horror.